In this video, we're going to be introducing Chapter 3. And Chapter 3 allows us to build a very important bridge um, between two values, and that is the mass of an atom versus the mass of a sample that we can actually measure out on a balance. Obviously, we can't measure the mass of a single atom. Um, so it's important for us to be able to um, measure out an amount on a balance and be able to relate that to the number of atoms or, or molecules that might be present. So one of the steps towards this end um, was development of the atomic mass unit. Okay, and the atomic mass unit is symbolized as AMU. Okay, and its, its value is actually kind of arbitrarily set. Um, it has to be referenced to a particular atom. Um, and there was some debate over this for some time between the chemists and the physicists. Um, ultimately, what they wound up doing was defining the following. They said that one atom of carbon-12 had a mass of 12 atomic mass units. Okay, and when you think about it, that, that seems kind of convenient, right? Because we have six protons and we have six neutrons on an atom of carbon-12. So we might get the impression here that maybe we can just say that a proton is one AMU or a neutron is one AMU. And it turns out that that's really not that far off, but it's also not very precise to say that. Um, mostly because we know that a proton and a neutron do not have the same mass. Also, um, when you start combining protons and neutrons together inside of an atom, uh, the sum is, de or sorry, that this, the, uh, the mass of the overall nucleus is not equal to the sum of the individual uh, particles that make it up due to a thing called mass defect, and that's not something we need to discuss here at this class. So a much, much more uh, accurate description would be that 1 AMU is defined as 1 12th the mass of a carbon-12 atom. Now this doesn't necessarily serve as that, that important link that I mentioned earlier on between the mass of an atom and the mass that we can actually measure out, um, but it's a step towards that. However, there is a little bit of an issue here with just um, assigning masses to particular atoms because we know from previous discussions that a single isotope is not necessarily going to re represent an entire sample of a particular element. Um, so, for example, if you consider carbon itself, we know that there's carbon-12 and there's carbon-13 and carbon-14, and these are the most common isotopes. Um, in terms of how much of each one of these is present in the environment, um, it turns out carbon-12 is about 98.90% of all the carbon in the environment. Carbon-13 is 1.10% and carbon-14, well, there's really only a trace amount of that, so we're not going to worry about it for now, but we could do a very accurate calculation if we use those actual values. Now, the reason why I bring this up is that if we were to assume that all carbon was 12 AMUs, it would not account for the fact that there are 13, I'm sorry, that there is some carbon-13 present, and that's going to kind of mess with our, our calculations. Okay, so what we need to do here is take into account the average of these, what we call the average atomic mass. Okay, and what this is, is a weighted average. of masses according to relative abundance. Okay, so 
um, how are we going to do this with carbon? Okay, well the first thing we need to do is get the data that we need to do this calculation. Okay, so if we were to look at carbon-12, okay, uh, carbon-12 we've already said is going to have a mass equal to 12 a AMU, and that is defined, so it's exactly that. Okay, carbon-13 has been experimentally determined to have a mass of 13.00335 amu okay and we've already said that 98.90 percent of all the carbon in the world is carbon 12 and that 1.10 percent of all the carbon in the world is carbon 13 so how do we figure out the average atomic mass okay like i said before it's a weighted average Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to take the mass of carbon-12, which we said is 12 AMU, and we're going to multiply it by the decimal version of its fraction, so for its abundance. Uh, so 98.90% becomes 0 0.9890. Okay, and to that we're going to add the mass of carbon-13. That should be 335 AMU uh, times the decimal version, our decimal form of its percentage, which is 0 0.0110. Okay, so what we're going to do is carry out this calculation, and we find that the average atomic mass of carbon is going to be 12.01 AMU. Okay, so this is how we calculate average atomic mass. Now, we also need to be prepared to go in reverse. Okay, so in other words, what if we were given the masses of two isotopes? And if we were given the average atomic mass, could we predict the relative abundances? Okay, so for example, let's consider um, rubidium. Okay, so rubidium comes in three, or sorry, two different possible isotopes. We have rubidium 85 and rubidium 87. Okay, and then the individual masses of those two elements, or two atoms, I should say, are 84.912. AMU and 86.909 again AMU okay and what we want to know is what is the relative abundance of each of these okay so the way to do this is to kind of take more of a uh, um, a formulaic approach to the calculation that we just did. Okay, so we know that the average atomic mass is going to be equal to whatever the mass of a rubidium 85 atom is times its abundance plus whatever the mass of a rubidium 89 I'm sorry, I said 89 earlier. I meant 87. Let me fix that real quick. Okay. Um, so whatever the mass of a rubidium 87 atom is times its abundance. And what that allows us to do now is to uh, set up the two unknowns, which are the abundances of rubidium 85 and rubidium 87. Okay, and since we're going to have to calculate for two different variables, uh, we need to have two different equations. 
Okay, and the second equation that we're going to use recognizes that the abundance of the one isotope plus the abundance of the other isotope, of course in their decimal form, is going to have to equal one. Okay, so we can say then that the abundance of rubidium 85 is going to be equal to one minus the abundance of rubidium 87. Okay, now what we can do here is plug that into our original equation. So the average atomic mass is going to be equal to the mass of rubidium 85 times 1 minus the abundance of rubidium 87 plus the mass of rubidium 87 times the abundance of rubidium 87. Okay, and we have all the data that we need now. Well, one more piece of data, and that is we need to know the average atomic mass if we're going to do this calculation. Okay, so we look up on the periodic table, and we see that the average atomic mass of rubidium is equal to 85.468. Okay, and that is AMUs. And we're going to set that then equal to the mass of rubidium 85, which we have up here. So that's 84.912 AMU. Okay, times 1 minus the abundance of rubidium 87, which is what we're going to be calculating for here, times the mass of rubidium 87, which was up here, 86.909, again, AMU, times the relative abundance of 87. Okay, now it's just a matter of um, running out this calculation. So let's simplify things a little bit. I want to take the units out here because we know that whatever we wind up with is going to be a decimal or of a percentage, so there's no real units to worry about. So this will keep things a little bit more tidy. Okay, and we get 84.912. I want to distribute that across the second term here, which is 1 minus a I'm sorry, the abundance of, uh, of the rubidium-87. Oops. Let's get this fixed up a little bit. Okay, there we go. And then A87. Okay, so that's that entire term plus 86.909 times the abundance of 87. Okay, now we can simplify this down further. Um, I'm going to subtract 84.912 from both sides, and then I'm going to combine the 86.909 um, times the abundance of, of the rubidium 87 Okay, with the 84.912 times the abundance of rubidium 87. Okay, so I wind up with 0 0.556 is equal to um, 1.997 times the abundance of rubidium 87, and then divide both sides by 1.997 and I wind up with an abundance for rubidium 87 um, being equal to 0 0.2784. Okay, now we know that according to this equation, the abundance of rubidium 85 is going to be equal to 1 minus the abundance of rubidium 87. And we wind up with 0 0.2784. 7216. Okay, so what we can say now is that 
in terms of relative abundances. Okay. Rubidium 85 okay, accounts for 72.16% of all rubidium, and rubidium 87 accounts for 27.84% of all rubidium. Okay, so that's how we go forward and backwards with these calculations.